Now that Fusion has been introduced into the new release of DaVinci, I thought it'd be a good time to go over the basics on how to use Fusion. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm already guessing you know how to put footage into the timeline for DaVinci. In here, I have a shot of a girl sitting next to a tree. And then on this shot, I added some snow and a light color correction. So the adding of the snow would all be done in Fusion. Uh, when you first start out with a shot, it's going to look similar to this one where you just have a media in and a media out. So this is coming in off the timeline and then this is going back out onto the timeline. So whatever you put in between these two nodes will be the effect that then goes back out to the timeline. Um, if at any point in time you accidentally delete one of these, it's very simple to get back. You just hit shift spacebar and a search comes up and then you're just going to put in media and then whichever one that isn't there. Speaking about putting nodes on here, uh, how nodes work is they all have different types of connections. Any of the yellow connections will always be background elements. The squares, these are always outputs. So you can connect an output to, in this case, a background, and then it'll come back over into here. If you see these two dots, that's just stating which viewer that current node is being displayed on. If you hit one, it'll be displayed on, the, on this side over here. And as you see in this node, it's on the right hand side. So it's, going, it's, it's displayed over here. Um, across the top here, you have all different types of tools that are commonly used. Um, so let's just add a background element. I just clicked here and then it added a background element and it also added this thing referred to as a merge. The other way of getting these nodes is if you hit shift spacebar again, you can search the tool if you know what the tool is. A lot of the times you won't know what the tool is. So the third way of opening up tools is if you right click down here and go to add tools, then you can get a list of all the tools that you have the ability to use. So if I was to, let's come back here and put another background up, or if you click into here and you pull something up, it's always going to just drop it here unless you have something highlighted. If something's highlighted, what will happen is it'll build off of whatever is highlighted. If you end up um, making a node and you don't have anything highlighted, it's just going to plop the node here. So um, sometimes you wanna build a part of an effect without it being connected to the current node structure. Uh, you would just click here and then uh, create whatever that thing is that you want to add. Uh, if you wanna then add it into here as we had a merge, you could come into your search and type in merge and it'll bring that merge node. To save time, if you know that these two nodes are the nodes that you want to connect, whichever one that you want on top, you're gonna to be dragging from. So whatever node you drag from is gonna be the foreground and then the other node will be the background. So it's kind of like, which one do you wanna have overlapped? So if I wanted this background node to be overlapped onto this, instead of bringing my, my merge node up here and connecting it, you could just grab this out and connect it to that out. It'll make a merge node. Um, you just have to know uh, which way you want it to go. So as you can tell, the background is here. And if we look at our output that's currently being displayed over here, we see that it's just black. And if we look at this node, this node is black because it's just a background node. It's just the solid color. Uh, and if we look at our merge node, what's happening here is we have this, we have our media coming in and it's going to the yellow arrow and we have our background that's going into the green. If you hover over any of the arrows, it'll show you what that particular arrow does. So this one's a background and then this one's going to be a foreground and we have this one down here as well, which is a, a mask. Uh, if I was to, uh, let's say for this node here, if I was to mask it, so if we, we add a mask, or you know you can type in a mask here, so if I go to rectangle and I add a rectangle, it's going to mask this node here in a rectangle overlapping over top of the media, and we have our play on this side, we can now see that displayed. If we come into our mask, we could invert it if we wanted to, we can change the size, change the angle. Uh, 
with Fusion, the keyframing was looked at a little differently, but we have our, uh, to enable our keyframes, they're right over here. Um, we have our spline editor, which then enables us to, to change our, uh, the way in which our keyframes work. And let me show you that quickly. So if I was to come into our rectangle here, and let's say we want it to move this around, all we would do is set it where, you know, we want it to start its position. We could come over to here and then set its position. And then we come into our timeline, change it where we're currently at in our timeline. Then we can move its position and I'll add another keyframe. Now, currently this move is going to be completely linear. There's not going to be any adjustment in velocity. Uh, nothing like that. So if I wanted to change that, I would come up here to my spline editor and I would click our rectangle because that's where our keyframes are. And in here, if we click this little guy, it'll just show the keyframes. So we could highlight our keyframes. And then if we hit F, it will then add a curve into here. And now what will happen is if we start here, there'll be some velocity. So it'll start out and then it'll go fast and then it'll slow down. Um, if we want it to, we could highlight one of these, hit T, and then we could set our ease in and our ease out. Um, so now if we play this, it'll ease in nice, nice and slow. And we don't have to use any of those. That's just to make it very smooth. And you could come into here and set keyframes and move this around, you know, all you want in any way, shape or form. And then it, it'll just be now we can see all of our keyframes here. But there's a ton of different things you can do. And if you want to, you can highlight one, hit delete, and it'll delete that keyframe. Um, so yeah, there, that's that. So let's go over to our other shot and I'll show you some of those. So coming over into this shot and instead of having to go back and forth like that, what you could do is you come up here to, to clips and it'll show you your clips in your timeline and then you can just go through them um, like this. So here is the project that I've been working on and there's a bunch of different things. So we have our media in and our media as the last node is our media out here. And if we see over here, this is like three dimensional space. So if I move this around, you can see like a bunch of different things, all of the let me zoom in. All of the snow, you see those as particles. You see uh, that she's coming out a little bit from the background, but you don't see that displayed over here. Uh, and the reason for that is because in this project, I have a camera that's looking at this head on, so it can't tell that there's different layers. But what I want it to have the effect is when you are filming snow, you're going to have snow that goes in front, but then you're also going to have snow that goes behind. So if I wasn't to have this layer here, all of my snow would go over top of her and not in some of it, you wouldn't have it disappear by going behind having it like this. It then goes behind and gives that effect like it might actually be there. Um, so those are some like little tricks that you can do to, um, to fake like the snow actually be in there. Um, at, we can also see if I come into here and for this renderer, I have the effects for uh, depth of field. If I turn that off, a lot of these spots uh, won't have that same depth of field. I can enable that depth of field and increase that depth of field. Well, that's a little bit too much, but uh, I can increase that depth of field a little bit. And then I would have to just come into my camera and set where my focus is. So I could bring it back to, uh, I would say right about there is the focus on her. And you could almost do um, something where you have the background out of focus. And because I have her cropped, uh, she could be in focus and then we have all of these different elements as you can see here we ha we have our camera looking at the the scene um what are some other things here so here i have my emitter and this is just a box let me move it up it's just a box and all it's doing is it's emitting particles straight down 
And then I have this turbulence because you're gonna have air and stuff blowing around, bouncing off of things like the tree and the ground. So you're gonna have some snowflakes that go up, some come down. This just adds some variance in the movement so that we just don't have them all just raining straight down. For our particle system, we have an emitter. Then we have the turbulence, which like I was talking about the air. And then our renderer, which is just rendering all the different particles and whatnot to then get spit out into the 3D, which then can get mapped um, into a 2D um, that's spitting out with the, with the camera. So I have the 3D, then it stays to another 3D merge, and this is just to, to help me with um, making everything look nice. I have my 3D camera, which I can move around the scene if I did have a bunch of 3D things, but this is just to fake the snow going behind her. Um, up here is the different parts of the image that I had to crop out. So the media comes in, it goes into, this merge isn't even needed, but it comes in a plane and all this is doing is it's taking the, the, the video, which is a 2D video, and it's putting it, it into 3D space. So that's this square here. You can move this around. Um, so that's what that is. Uh, then here I have that same thing we were talking about with the rectangle. I have another one of the same exact thing, but then I have a shape um, that I actually have tracked that then follows her around the scene because the camera moves around. Um, and that's just tracking on this front element here. This matte control enables me to add a matte for the 3D object. So there's a couple of cool things that, that are here. And if you see, there are there's a bunch of different types of arrows. So for over here, I have a garbage uh, mat, and that is pretty much just taking out everything else that I don't want um, that I'm that I, I'm using for this. Um, and then I have my my 3D object here. Then these two images then get merged together, so it's it's still in 3D space, but they're they're at least merged together as one object. Um, and then. That I have this come down to a, another merge, which then introduces the particle system that I have. And then I have another layer, which is my camera, and then my uh, renderer, and the renderer will take all of my 3D elements that I have, so I only have a couple of pixels, and I have two different um, uh, elements that are, that are running the same footage. And then I have it going to an output that will then take the 3D object and put it back into 2D, which then can get put back onto the timeline for me to work on from there. So once I have all of this done and I have my effect, uh, I achieved my effect, then I could come over to the color tab and just like old Da Vinci, uh, we can actually come in and then we can start to color this just like anything else. And you can take it in, into audio with the Fairlight and then delivering as well. So there's a ton of different things that you can do. You can make different elements like that one there. Um, and then you add the sound into it, but uh, you can do that. You can add um, lower thirds like this here, and you can add um, title cards like this here. So there's just, there's a ton of different things that you can, that you can do with this. Um, over the you know coming months, you're going to see more and more uh, people creating uh, tutorials and stuff, explaining how a lot of the different tools work. There already are some for Fusion. I'm starting to introduce more and more onto uh, my channel as well. Uh, I'll in the coming weeks, I'm going to uh, look through more of the suggestions that people have recommended, and I'll uh, work on tutorials on how to achieve those different looks. Um, so if you have something of interest that you want to uh, get some help with making and um, I have the stock footage to back up some of those requests, I'll definitely take a stab at it. But yeah, with that being said, again, my name's JR and thanks for watching.